Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi, it's Kim and Jen. <laughs> so today is May 20th. You'll be seeing this on May 22nd. And yes, I have my car bath bulky sweater on. It's been cold. I was have... shivering in my bed last yes. night. Time to get out the hot water bottle. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful sunny day, but it's brisk. My hands were freezing all day working in the mill, and the mill is hot usually, but we had the windows open because it was uh, so lovely. So that's it. So here I am with my car bath. It was two degrees last two night degrees. and we had frost. Yep. yep. And okay. there was just a little skim of ice over the water buckets. <laughs> yes, there eight. was ice in the water buckets. Yes. Yeah. Last week of May or whatever. Yeah. Very so good. So here we go. All right. Um, and so for those that are just joining us maybe for the first time, we're Kim and Jennifer. We're and sisters. We, yeah. We own the Fleece and Harmony Woolen Mill in Belfast, Prince Edward Island, Canada. And um, we make yarn and we have, have a yarn shop and yeah. have a sheep. Yeah. Or <laughs> have a sheep or two, or two <laughs> or 150. And um, that's it. Yeah. We knit. We knit a lot. And we're trying to crochet, but things are taking a long time to arrive. Yes. So uh, this is our uh, podcast about, or video vlog, or whatever they call it, about um, <laughs> knitting and sheep and stuff that's happening, PEI and all kinds of stuff. Perfect. All right, so what's our farm update? Boring. I don't know. Yeah, you know, we prefer that it's boring, but we're waiting for the grass to grow, and literally, it's a lot slower than watching paint dry. Yeah. Especially Grass when the temperature starts like really growing over 16 degrees. We're lucky to hit that these days. Right. Tomorrow we're supposed to, I think. For one day. For one day. So just to prepare everybody, if you do follow along with us going forward, the next thing we complain about is that the grass grew too fast. <laughs> no, not lately. <laughs> no. Not so, last, the last few years. So this is the problem is that it just doesn't grow steadily, slowly. It does nothing, and then all of a sudden it's up past the top of your boots, yeah, and, then and then it's you're too like, then it's, eat. yeah, then it's too mature. Get going, yeah, yeah, okay. So that's uh, so that's it. So, but that uh, hasn't happened the last three years because we've had absolutely no rain through July and August. Yes, right. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so that's that. I don't know that there has there been anything funny happening with the animals. No, we have a couple new foxes that have moved in. Yes. Thank goodness we don't have chickens. Right. Or we wouldn't have chickens. Mm -hmm. And they're very bold. And they're not afraid of an Irish wolfhound. Oh, did you see them? Nope. On your yeah. walk? Oh, okay. They're not afraid of anything. No. They're very... They, they One of them came right up to Ken, actually, on the... Yeah. He, was, he takes his ATV for a little ride every night in our, our wood lot, because we have a trail there. And he said, they're not afraid. No. I had my dog out, and they were like, you know, 50 yards away. Yeah. And she was just looking over. I can take her. <laughs> yeah. But now Ken has seen two. Yeah. So the they were together. The black tip on the tail? I oh, don't great. I had her breathing. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so he's seen the two of them together, which they have, they're territorial, so they wouldn't normally be together if it's two females or two males. So it's a couple, obviously. Mm. So the next right thing, in. we're going to have four. Or, or more. Yeah, I don't Eight. know how many they have in a litter. Plenty. Do more they? than two. Oh, oh okay. yeah. I thought it was like two or three or something. Well, I don't know. Yeah, we don't know about... We'll have to... But they're, they are beautiful. Mm -hmm. I hate mm -hmm. to say it, but the one I saw was really pretty. Yeah. Black they're, tip on her tail. Yeah, and the fur. And so we have like tons of foxes here on PEI. In fact, verging on a nuisance population yeah. of foxes. And everybody is a little bit surprised, but um, at one time... PEI, especially around the western end of the province, was kind of like a, an epicenter for fox farming in Canada, like at the turn of the century. The last century. Yeah, oh yeah, the last century. <laughs> I forgot the century turn in 2000. <laughs> yeah, so um, at the turn of the 19th, into the 19th yeah. century. And uh, the foxes, uh, the foxes are red foxes, but lots of times you see them with black on them. And that's because they were, they've naturalized, if you want, from the populations of silver foxes that were grown here on, um, on fox farms. Mm -hmm. So it's super interesting because we got there, you can see them all different, different colors, but um, there's, so there's lots of them. They seem to do well here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's kind of uh, it's kind of funny because foxes are common all across Canada, but we do have our more than our we punch above our weight mm -hmm. with the fox population yeah. here, 
and uh, there's there's uh, because we're an island there's all there's things that we don't have here that are quite common in the rest of the Maritimes like pork porcupines moose yeah we deer don't, we don't have deer bears. moose bears which are right in Nova Scotia yeah but not here and porcupines which is another I don't know if you everybody around the world is familiar what a porcupine looks like but um, that's a really common I don't know what kind of what gen genus it is the porcupine I guess we'll have to look at that up but uh, it's really odd that we don't have them here and good because they result in very expensive vet bills for dogs for yes. dogs if it's dead, a nightmare dogs. if your dog gets a hold of a porcupine an absolute nightmare yeah and gets the you quills, have to have all the quills awesome. removed yeah. yeah yeah so I'm happy we don't have that as awful as a skunked dog is a porcupine one is much worse yes and they're it's very painful yes yeah so it's awful the skunk you just stink you're not hurt though. yeah the porcupine is an ordeal yeah to say so, the least it goes yeah. all up through the roof of their mouth and stuff yeah it's terrible. terrible so that's that's it so that's not a farm update that's a wildlife your wildlife nature yeah <laughs> but we have we think uh, a great horned owl we do have one yeah. for sure two I'm confused about the two thing. I think they're territorial too, or are they also mating? Well, I think they nest fairly early and mate. Okay. Well, they have to mate. Well, I don't know. Anyway, there's, 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 two. there's quite a few species on. <laughs> <laughs> they have to get together at least for one date. Yeah. Um, there's quite a few species of owls on the island. Yes. So we listened to all the calls yeah. and determined that the call was a great horned owl. Yes. Because they're the ones that go, hoo, hoo, hoo. Like the traditional Disney owl type of thing. Yes. And uh, the rest of them have different calls. Right. So uh, we we researched that, and that's what we had. We were thrilled, but we've never seen it. No. No. It'd be a thrill to see it. Yeah, but apparently they're quite uh, quite elusive. I would imagine. Shy. I mean, they're owls after all. Yes, they are. So we'll be out doing the owl prowl. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there's like a nature... um, I don't know, McPhail Woods is a kind of a nature conserv- conservancy, I guess, mm-hmm. in uh, close by, and they do an owl prowl often, and it's, uh, like, it's free, but you register for it, and it's, it's like the hottest ticket. Mm-hmm. You can't hardly get in. Go try to find some owls yeah. in the wilderness of Prince they, Edward Island. Yeah, and yeah. then they identify the different calls and everything. And Yeah, yeah. so that yeah. would be fun if we ever had time to go. Yeah. Eight years and counting. Yeah. I haven't had time. That's right. <laughs> they have several a year, but anyway. And it's right next door, practically. <laughs> <laughs> this is difficult. <laughs> but, yeah. We've been to the beach once. Yeah. Okay. All right, so that's about that. Right. All the chatter. Right. So what are we going to do next? We're going to talk about virtual knit night. Okay. And in a relativity um, reality check, since this whole virus thing, yeah. I forgot Hurricane Dorian's name. Oh, that's how irrelevant that seems now. Okay. And I'm very sick of the word virtual. Okay. I really hope after this is over, I never hear the word virtual again. Right. But let's talk about virtual knit night. Because I would rather have a real knit night. Yeah. Or I'm just sick of the word virtual. Let's Mm -hmm. call it something else. Okay. Zoom knit night. Whatever. Anyway. That's good. Ours, we are now able to have four other people indoors, mm-hmm. or five altogether, mm-hmm. social distance. So we're going to invite back our some of our anyway regulars, I don't know how we're going to manage who gets to attend or yeah. whatever, to have our in-person knit night here in our shop, because mm-hmm. that's the way it started out, mm-hmm. of course. It looked very sad when I told everybody at virtual knit night yeah. that we weren't going to have one next week. Yeah. And we're very sad about that too, mm-hmm. but there's only so much we can do. So we're going to run a virtual one once a month. Right. So that we can all still get together because of mm-hmm. course we've made many new friends. Yes. And, and we love knit night. seeing everybody. Yes. That we see their names on. It's on, been great. On, yeah. But yeah. after all, we have no employees. Mm-hmm. We are doing double the amount of podcasts, and then virtual knit night on top of that. It's yeah. getting pretty exhausting, and it's it's really fun, but it is harder to manage. It's yes. not as relaxing as um, you know. I hate to say it, but literally, I've come out to knit night with my pajamas on. Right. <laughs> Well, I mean, they probably wouldn't care if we wore no, pajamas. No, I know. They'll all right in now and be like, don't worry about it. Yeah, no. But, know. but you know, there's the comments and you're yeah. trying to get it set up and the yeah. internet is sketchy sometimes. Yeah, the internet stuff. is probably one of the main. Like, 
All we got all last time was internet connection is unstable. Yeah. So are it's... you listening? Provincial government? Yeah. We need proper internet. Right. We're hoping that at least so, a good legacy that comes out of all of this mess yeah, is that we that is internet. stressful and exhausting when people can't yeah. hear you and stuff. So we're yeah. going to go back to the in-person one, but we're going to try to keep that one going once mm -hmm. a month, which mm -hmm. not everybody attends every single week. So mm -hmm. hopefully once I send out the schedule um, on in the newsletter, everybody will make an attempt to sort of attend when yeah. it runs and then it'll be, you know, not everybody's coming to everyone anyway. Yeah. So hopefully yeah. that'll mostly fill the need yeah. without killing us. <laughs> <laughs> and the internet is definitely a problem. Mm -hmm. So they could all talk. Yeah. <laughs> we couldn't talk. Yeah. Last time yeah. that's yeah. what happened. Yeah. Everybody that was attending could yeah. talk, but we, we well, were just sitting couldn't, there. <laughs> we couldn't hear, they couldn't hear us or yeah. we, we couldn't hear them. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. It was really like talk among yourselves. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we were just sitting there. <laughs> okay, very good. So All whips. Right. Yeah. So do you want to go first? I'm going to go first because mm -hmm. as usual, I'm excited and I have something brand new, yes. believe it or not, yes. which is irresponsible, but I'm a knitter. Let's just be thankful I'm knitting again. <laughs> so this is bigger, mm -hmm. but you probably can't tell. Not much. Yeah. I think I only put, I'm not going to lie, I think I put half an inch on it okay and I my goal was two inches but I got distracted <laughs> but uh, I'll Squirrel. probably yeah I'll probably work on this more um the upcoming week because I am run out of stuff that I need for the next thing oh so this is my okay. flat rock test knit which was due April 22nd I'm still working on it mm -hmm. it's still beautiful it's still fun I love working with the different colors and stuff but just not a lot of progress really until I get this piece done yeah, and it's how many rows exciting. were you saying in an inch I think there's uh, about well maybe an inch and a half but probably about 24 rows to an inch and a half okay. or so yeah so it's you know half an inch is a few rows yeah it's an inch mm. at a time. It's no way to really finesse that into sounding like I put a lot into it but yeah. you're gonna see why not <laughs> so I got very distracted by the sweater that Rachel showed at virtual knit night a few weeks ago which is called the Sunday cardigan by petite knit and I fell in love with the weight of it because it's knit on a seven millimeter but you fill in the space with two strands of kid silk case wow so this is like feathery soft oh I, I thought that was something stuck in there it's a it's a stitch marker it's my stitch marker oh okay yeah. I thought it was so feel it. Yeah, I know. It's dreamy. Well, you haven't felt it before. I did feel it because I oh. moved it on the table. Oh, okay. Just now. Yeah. Yeah. So again, it's called the Sunday Cardigan. It's knit flash. You know, no steaking or anything like mm -hmm. that. I've already split for the sleeves. Wow. I did manage to have one repeat missing, which meant I was three stitches short when I got to the <laughs> split the body, but I just added them in and it'll yeah. be fine. It's very uh, giving. I love it because the yoke is fitted similar to the Marled Mania, yeah, so you, nice you can't really go wrong yeah. with, the, with the sizing. I mean, mm -hmm. it's going to give as much as you want it to or don't. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't. that's why I wasn't too worried about my stitch count. This is actually a sewn down double collar that goes here. How decadent. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then it's got really nice long uh, sleeves, and I'll show, of course, the project photo from her or the pattern photo. But yeah, yeah, nice. It's like I'm calling it my. Um, it feels like a dream. Yeah, I'm calling it my pink butterfly knit. <laughs> or no, what did I call it? Instead of unicorn farts, it's pink butterfly farts. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah. So because we have a running joke about unicorn farts here. Yeah. And generally, the word fart. Isn't a word I like. Yes. But <laughs> we're trying to use very often. I can't stop saying it today. Fart, fart, fart. Oh. Pink butterfly farts. Yeah. <laughs> That's Good. the fabric I've selected. Yeah. You've switched virtual for farts. <laughs> yeah. I fart can't believe I said it. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I love this. Yeah. And it's lovely. It's, it's very quick, obviously. It's surprising when you pick it up because you think yeah. it's going to be heavy. And it is light as a feather. Yeah. It's just dreamy. Yeah. And of course, she did it, designed it in a different yarn. Um, and I'm using Garfield Grizzly. Mm hmm. Uh, what did we call the one that doesn't smooth? The Garfield Grizzly Smooth. Yeah. And I want to tell everybody admiring this right now that this has been sitting here for months. Yeah. And so I thought, well, heck with that I'm gonna use it and yeah. it matches this candy girl 
uh, kid silk case, which we're now out of because I knit it all, but mm-hmm. it's right here. I've knit it all into my oh, sweater. Okay. It matches it perfectly. Yeah. So we do have Candy Girl coming back in stock. We yeah. have lots of other colors. It should be here case. tomorrow. But we have only see. one sweater's worth of this left now because yeah. I didn't buy it, so I just went and knit it. Yeah. And used it. <laughs> but uh, we might be able to make more Garfield Grizzly at, at some time. And it works perfectly in the sweater for Gage. And we do also have it in the Linden Blossom. So mm-hmm. you could also make it uh, the sweater. I considered doing it in this color. It was yeah. a really tough choice. Yeah. Because this is really pretty, too. Yeah. And do we have a sweater quantities in this? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of both of these. Okay. And so, what, which Kid Silk Haze would go with that? I don't know. We'd have to take a look. Yeah. But uh, I'll put the link to Garfield Grizzly below. Mm-hmm. And um, you could do it with a white or one of the yellows or like the Eve Green would with be cream. really pretty. Or yeah. Cream. Do you want me to re- grab Eve Green? You can do it. Yeah. So you could do it. This is Eve Green. And this is cream. Mm-hmm. So you could do it with either one of those. Mm-hmm. Or you could hold one of each. Do a double yeah. like that. Yeah. So I thought it might be tricky managing two strands of Kid Silk Haze and one like knitting triple stranded through this whole thing. But this stuff is so clingy, you wouldn't even notice that you were knitting with three different things. No, you can barely see it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the cool thing that I did, because I'm just using the one color of Kid Silk Haze, is I used it as an outside pull and a center pull ball. And right. so both my strands were coming off the same ball so yeah. that I wasn't juggling two balls. Mm-hmm. So that really made it even easier mm-hmm. um, again. So yeah, you can have a look. Anyway, Garfield Grizzly, Sunday cardigan with kids. Kids always. And uh, that's what I've been up to. Yeah. Up to no So good. how long is it going to take you to make that? Not long. Wouldn't huh? take me any time at all. Yeah. But the candy girl's on order. So, so I have does to a Sunday now. mean that you can knit it in a Sunday? Maybe. If you, you probably, probably could. could. Yeah. If you really got up early if and you started really knitting, and didn't make any mistakes. I'm sure it means that it's relaxing and comforting. But. Right. It's for your Sunday walk. Yeah. Rachel and I are going to have matching ones now. We're going to go out. Is hers the same color? Oh, no. Hers oh, is like okay. a perfectly sensible brown, <laughs> green, <laughs> brownie green. And so you're, it's flat? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you're knitting and purling. Yeah. Lovely. And is it just straight stocking it now? Of, well, I, I, there's a picture, so yeah. I, why am I talking? Okay. Right. So I've been really, that's been a really fun side project. Mm-hmm. Great. I like to have new stuff. Yeah, I was going to cast on the Kate Davies hat, but I didn't have a chance. But I'm going to do it this time because I want to learn double knitting. Okay. What? <laughs> you say it every... What? That emphatically all... I know time. because I really want to knit it. Yeah. It's got a lovely snowflake on it. I mean, I'm still going to be able to wear it. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, you're right. <laughs> yeah. So, oh boy. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I'm also having great success with my Cornwallis. Okay. So, I started the red... So, I, I don't know. It just makes me happy. So, the red is now um, this is inside out. attached. Oops. So, uh, and I, I don't know what was wrong with my head as far as numbers go last podcast because I was completely wrong. This was not, people must have been, the more experienced knitters were saying 11 <laughs> inches. That's not long enough for a sweater. And you'd be absolutely right. It's actually 14 inches roughly. Or um, if we want to stay with safe centimeters, it's 37 centimeters that I had to um, that I had to knit. So I had quite a lot left to do when I showed this last week. And um, I still haven't made a final decision about what I'm going to do about the bottom. But thank you, everybody. That Lots of for made, Yeah, some really good suggestions. So um, I'm going to just finish what I'm doing here and then I'm going to tackle the bottom before I start the front. This is the back because uh, I want them to look the, look the same. So I even toyed with the idea of starting the front the same way and then doing the same fix depending on how invisible yeah. the fix is. is that what you would have done? No, I was going to fix this oh, okay. and then start from scratch with whatever the fix is mm. unless it's an I-cord edge. I don't know. Did somebody say you could just crochet with a smaller needle along here? Uh, I, there was a lot of suggestions. Okay. So it seems like the options are, are yeah. there's lots of, lots of suggestions. Okay. And um, one included just uh, the way that, I'll have to go back and kind of read it, the way that you tack um, the seam together mm-hmm. is that you can make it control the roll right. that way. Sure, so that was true. one, which then actually makes not a bad kind of neat Mm-hmm. edge but 
We'll see. We'll we see don't what love happens. the rolled edge. No. I'm with you. No. I'm not buying it. Yeah. Okay. So I can't, can't convince you. So this is, <laughs> um, this is where I am. So not much, not much more mm -hmm. to go. It's going really fast. Yeah. It's cute, isn't it? Yeah. It's, you're going to wear it a lot. I will wear it a lot. Yes. And it's very, it's very comfortable. It's still looser than what you would expect. Yeah, I just thought there was a it's probably a loose stitch. Foot there. It looked like a dark something. Okay. Oh, okay. There's actually a little bit of a loose stitch there. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, did I make a mistake? <laughs> <laughs> now I, oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Is it a knit when there should have been a pearl? God help us. I can't even see it now. Yeah, okay, so that's good. Okay. All right, so, um, and just on the raglan um, decreases, because I had a bit of a dilemma, it just says decrease. So I wasn't sure if I was gonna keep on doing the same decrease that they did right on the edge. So I always do my decreases one stitch in. So I knit the first stitch just like you would normal normally, and I, I knit, do my decreases in one, sometimes two, depending on how visible I want them to be, so that when I'm sewing up, that I have a good clean stitch on the end. So I tried um, on the, what is this, going this way. So the left leaning decreases, I tried um, slip slip knit, and um, it was a little, it's, it seemed to me that it was a little obvious. So then I did uh, the decrease that Martin Story suggests on the lower part here, which is slip, slip one, knit one, and then pass over. So I've decided that that's the one that I'm using and it looks the most like the knit two together on the right side. They're on the left side, which is the right side leaning decreases. Is that confusing? <laughs> so, so that's what I'm doing. So, uh, yeah. So that's Perfect. it. I'm really happy with it. Be done in no time. It's going fast. Mm -hmm. It's very pleasant to knit because mm -hmm. it's very easy. Looks pleasant. And of course this is garter on the top. Mm -hmm. So it's just all even straight better. knit. Yeah, even yeah. better. So, uh, so that's that. I can hardly wait till it's warm enough that you can wear a cotton sweater. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Never mind the t-shirt. Right. Forget that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, as tempting as it was to start my, uh, my paisley jacket, which I really wanted to do, I have to knit the swatch for that though. As I didn't kind of want to stop doing this. That's how I feel about my Sunday cardigan. Oh, okay. So it's really uh, good. So I know there's a few people that have started the Cornwallis. It's, I'm, I'm sure you'll agree with me that it's really, it's really fun to knit. And this yarn, again, I can't say enough about it. I really like it. Mm -hmm. So that's that. So, so we haven't got the forum, project forum set up on our website yet. Right. But if I manage to get it set up by Friday, I'll link to it in the show notes. Okay. And then we're going to definitely have one for this Paisley jacket that you're going to talk about. Yes. Cornwallis flat rock. I'll be done the Sunday cardigan, but right. I don't know. Um, so we'll, we'll keep you updated on that, but I just haven't had a chance to do the technical work around getting that on the website mm -hmm. yet. So we'll talk now about my Paisley jacket. So okay. my little teeny tiny swatch that I just started, but I, um, I wanted to show it anyway. And just, well, the needle size looks good. Yeah. So it's a three mm -hmm. and Generous. yeah, and it's a 24, <laughs> oop, it's a 24, um, <laughs> stitch, uh, gauge that you want and you can use a three or a 3.5. Um, so whatever, uh, whatever gauge or whatever needle size that you need to get that gauge. Um, the yarn is quite thin. It's, um, pleasant to work with, I have to say. And, uh, it's already feels smoother once you start knitting with it. <laughs> it's wonderful. Yeah. So what I decided to do, so the swatch is, um, done in color work. So I'm doing it on just, I'm, and the sweater is knit in the round. So I'm doing my swatch in the round, like a good little girl, mm -hmm. but I hate doing swatches like this. I find it very fiddly with these strings in the back, mm -hmm. but I'm doing it because that's the right <laughs> thing to do. And after I invest the amount of time it's going to take to make this jacket, I don't want there to be any disappointments, let's say. Right, definitely not. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm a fairly loose knitter, I guess, most of the time, or kind of, I'm kind of in the middle, I guess. I'm, I'm not really necessarily too tight or too loose, but I start it with the three, and we'll see what happens. If it's, uh, if it's too tight, I don't think it's going to be too tight. 
and I do two-handed color work, so that's no, all. I don't think it's going to so, be too tight either. Yeah, so I actually um, started the swatch on one of the color work charts. So I'm mm -hmm. making a paisley swatch, which I'm really excited about because I'm just at the point where I can start to see how the shape is going to mm -hmm. come. So I'm going to have a really good idea of what the pattern is going to be like. And um, it's, uh, it's going to be really fun. Mm -hmm. And poor Sinsel yes. watched our podcast yes. and heard me complain about the colors. <laughs> not that the colors aren't lovely. Yeah. It's just what, not what I was expecting from the printed pattern right. that came with it. Right. Okay. Yeah. But it's still beautiful. And obviously you love this color. Yes. yes. So you can see... And we're tickled that she watched. Yeah. <laughs> well, she watched because I told her that we had <laughs> okay. done it. But we're... Um, it gives a better indication. Because this actually looks... The blue... I'm going to spend my whole time picking yeah, up these balls. The, these rolly balls. <laughs> the When you just have the... Um, the yarn by itself, it it looks looks quite gray. But in fact, when you see the the swatch against this very blue sweater, mm -hmm. it is blue. Yeah, it's almost exactly the same color. Yeah, and you love this. I love it. I always have. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's interesting because even I didn't know it was that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, purple. Yeah, that purple. So you know, to be fair. It's it is called in lavender the, yes. the paisley jacket in it's lavender. Just the leaf that looked more like a bright blue. Yes. Yeah. So it is. It's lavender. Is this a stone down double collar? Yeah. Ugh. I love, love it. it. Yeah. Yeah. With the three, it's yeah. a real three needle. I'm not thing sure how this one is finished off, but I'm okay. excited. And this sweater reminds me of this sweater because, of course, it's thick and bulky yeah. in the kids' case. Yeah. yeah. So yes. this is my Carbeth uh, Swan Dance. Yeah. If anybody's asking, and I uh, held. Uh, um, silk mohair with it. With air, air, and weight. With air, air, and weight. Yeah. yeah. It has, a, it probably has a very similar feeling, but it's more dense. A little bit, um, the air and weight would be a little bit heavier than the core air and I'm sort of using in my Yes, that's thing. right. Yeah. Okay, so back to right, the sorry. Paisley jacket. Getting off track. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, week. this is, now you have a better judge yeah. of how blue it actually is. So, it is bluer than it seemed when I just had the balls of yarn. Mm -hmm. And the light gray, um, Go, looks surprisingly light once it's in the pattern. Mm -hmm. So in the the printed pattern, it looked more like a like a like a blue and white, but it's the light gray and it's very soft and mm -hmm. and lovely. Well, so, it's going to be beautiful no matter what. Yeah. obviously. And uh, depending on how things go, if I get enough knitted on my my swatch, I will wash and block it. And if we have time before the the video is uh, uploaded, maybe we can take a picture of it. But I'm not I'm not gonna. We're not going to stress ourselves out about it, but I'm no. particularly excited to get the forum going for this project. Yes. Because a lot of people that watch us, of course, also watch Fruity Knitting, mm -hmm. and she was just on there, yeah. and we heard from a lot of people who are also embarking on a kit, or yes. afraid to embark or on a kit, or have had it already. And yeah, yeah, so that will be really fun. Yeah. So I hope I can get that going. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, and I've already asked her a pattern question, so she... Oh, she's very, um, Sinsel's very um, excited to have people knitting her, her patterns. And I, you know, it's like I said to her, I said, well, it's just so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I apologized in advance because I said I'm not, not that fast of a knitter. So it's going to take me a while to do it. But if anybody well, wants to hearing about it. Forever. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. if anybody wants to join me, join me, not in an official capacity, like a cow, but if you want to knit along with me, I'll yeah. Give try to encourage. Do. There's not a lot of, um, I checked Ravelry for project notes and there's not a lot of notes on, hmm. on Ravelry. So it's, that's a good resource for most patterns if a lot of people have knit them but um there's not a lot of information mm -hmm. there so we'll be happy to It'll just share. be fun to follow along because yeah. the projects are all so beautiful and i'm sure yeah. everybody got different ones yeah 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 so it's great all right so that's it that's uh works in product Pro we're works in progress <laughs> we, can't talk. we can't talk all right so uh, okay so now, the big news is this behemoth thing sitting here on the table right Let's so call that out. we're starting the shop update. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. okay. So we have a couple. Um, I hope this is all attached or fall. No. It's going to fall apart. Yeah. Okay. We did. We, we did show this once before. Yes. And okay. people are asking, what episode did you show us? Oh, Lord. And I can't remember. No can do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just here it is again. <laughs> okay. So this Oops. is a tabletop swift. Right. Meaning you do not have to anchor it to anything. Right. It's smooth as yeah. silk. And you adjust, these are 
sort of in fixed increments, but the sliding one allows you to tighten on your hang yes. or whatever yes. to make a nice tight fit. Yeah. And then you're winding it onto a ball. Nasta pin. A Nasta or pin. whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. It's smooth as silk. Such yeah. amazing woodworking done by Squash yeah. at Fox Mountain Spindles. Right. Fox Mountain. Yeah. Yeah. For a minute there, I was going to say Fox Harbor, but that's a golf course. Yeah. That's it. Okay. So I, I can't um, emphasize the amount of care that he takes with his wood. Like there's the little sticky rubber things on the bottom. It doesn't move when you're using it. Mm -hmm. It's just the mechanism smooth of it itself. is smooth. The woodworking is fabulous. And he's very thoughtful about every part that he does. So I will say um, the, the uh, pegs are slightly different because... Um, these are a little bit fiddly with these bumpy things on them. So the pegs are a little bit smoother on the on the ones that we have now. And the way that, uh, that it's not just the swift. So there's a little Allen key that um, snaps right into the into one of the arms with a magnet. So and look at how he's laid in that magnet. Yeah. I mean, how do you even do that? I don't know. It's I mean, fantastic. It's yeah. like you can barely feel Amazing it. Amazing job. So. You have your um, We're ball. We're just going to hold it up a bit because I think okay. that's a bit low in our frame. You so have your, I can do it because okay. I got my right hand here. All right. So you have your um, finished with your ball. Okay. And You've made screw. your ball on your Nostapin. Yeah. Yes. And you're ready to use it. Yeah. Okay. This comes <coughs> off. Pardon me. Okay. And there's a little washer there. So just uh, do we grab the that. washer? Uh, you would. I, no, no. That goes with this part. Okay. So the um, the arms come apart. So if you wanted to store it, you can store it like this. So you just if they just click into magnet. Now we're turning this into a yarn, a yarn buddy. So this is the base for your Swift tabletop Swift, mm -hmm. and then you put your yarn on here. That you've done on your Nasta pin, hopefully. Yeah. Oh, that's heavier than it looks. <laughs> that holds it in place. Yeah. And then you can feed your yarn yeah. off here using the same you just Beautiful, whistling smooth. along, yeah. knitting at the speed of light. Yeah. Along it goes. Yeah. So fun. It's really nice. So we do sell these yarn buddies on their own, yeah. Um, which I think we have some in stock. Yeah, we just got some more too. We just got some more. Okay, beautiful. So you can buy that, or you can essentially get both yes. by buying the Swift. Yes. So just, um, oh, there goes the, <laughs> <laughs> I'm having too much fun. Yeah. Okay. So, um, people that have the yarn buddy, or if you're considering buying the yarn buddy, um, we get the question quite often, if you can convert the yarn buddy and just buy pieces to make the swift on the base of your yarn buddy. And unfortunately you can't because the yarn buddy that you buy separately has this, this, piece that holds your yarn um, glued into the top of it so it doesn't come off hmm. so unfortunately you can't I'm reassemble this now yeah unfortunately you can't um, convert your yarn buddy into a swift with if you could buy the pieces to do that right. you can't you can't do it so so if you're considering the yarn buddy and a swift you should um, buy the just the swift, the swift you'll get both. Yeah, you'll get yeah. both. But you know, you can give your yarn buddy if you if you decided you want to upgrade. Gift your yarn buddy. Gift they're it. they're fantastic. Yeah. Too. So now so. it's back to being a tabletop switch. Yeah. Just that. I just <laughs> in literally forty five seconds. Oh. Well yeah. done. Yeah. Well done, Scott. Locally made. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. I'm wrecking the place today. <laughs> I'm all over the place. Okay. Yeah. Very well done. Okay. Yeah. So these we actually have them in stock. We have seven some of them were pre-ordered four of them have been pre-ordered okay so, so there's three. three more and there's more on the way okay but there's a link in the show notes to buy this yes yeah the yeah. show notes are the description box below the video right yeah but you people click have... a little arrow and it opens up yeah and we always put all the products that we feature there's a lot of in there there's yeah. a lot of information there yeah so people were uh not everybody knew about the show notes no. so that's good yeah all right, so that's that. So very exciting. We're very happy to we have actually those. have them available to order. We have shipping boxes for them that yep. it fits in, which yep. is another whole to ordeal. Keep it safe. We're all set now. Yes, we're very good. good. We're in good the Swift business. We're, in, we're good to go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 
So, uh, so that's it. And you wanted to talk about kids sell K's or have we already talked? We about already it? talked about that. Just yeah. to say that if you want to try the Sunday card again, we have almost every single color of kids sell K's in there. stock yeah. now. We've got five new colors and coming. This I week. made it with the Garfield Grizzly, but it's a pretty, you know, it's like. 200 yards for 100 grams, kind of, you might have something in your stash, but mm -hmm. if you're looking for the double strands of kids so to go with it, have a look in the Rowan section of our website because yep. we have a lot of the colors in stock. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so uh, now it's Ask Us Anything. Right. All right, so we've had, we had two good questions. Okay, again. love the questions. Yeah, so okay. Missy Van One has asked how many skeins of yarn we get from a fleece. So we've been asked this question before, yeah. but we'll, we'll just repeat the information because it's, uh, the answer is it depends. <laughs> so it depends on how big the fleece is um, and what you're making out of it. So obviously the skeins of yarn depend on how, how um, thick or thin your yarn is, but let's just take a general 200 to 250 yard skein for 100 grams is kind of like a middle of the road um the breed depends on the breed of the sheep so uh sheep that is a uh, wool producing sheep can have quite a heavy fleece so some of uh, the um, breeds like the corydale which we have uh Corydale crosses in our flock mostly, and we have a couple registered Corydales. Their fleece can be as heavy as, you know, between 12 and 15 pounds if you've got a good wool producer. And that's the raw weight that comes off the sheep. Mm -hmm. So when it's shorn and you gather everything up, it can weigh 12 to 15 pounds. Then the, um, then after that, you have to skirt it. So you take out all of the bits that you don't want to, to have to deal with when you're making the yarn. So you lose probably about 25 to 30% of the weight maybe in the skirting, mm -hmm. depending, just depending on how clean or dirty it is or you know, how, if, they're, fed. how they're fed. If there's a lots of um, uh, feed stuck in the neck area, you're better just to, to put that to the side and, and uh, not try to spin it. So let's say you're left with, um, I don't know, less than 10 pounds of fleece. And then as we process it, lanolin is really heavy, actually. So you, just in the processing of the fiber, you can lose 40% uh, in the washing. Of, in the washing and the initial kind of combing of the fiber when we first get started, before we even get to the carter. The carter um, eats up doesn't need it, but it eats up about um, a pound, almost 450 grams of fiber just to charge the wheels. So all of the brushes that are inside the carter that work the fiber, um, the very first bit that goes through, you've already you've already got 450 grams in the um, in the different um, um, combs. So that's not wasted because it comes out again, but your you it uses that much just to charge the the carter and uh, so in the end you can let's it look for round numbers because i started to say it wasn't very good with numbers on the last one let's say you start <laughs> with 10 10 uh pounds of raw fleece you can lose 40 percent in the processing altogether so then you're left with six pounds you get four and a half skeins of your 100 gram skeins in per pound so you're getting about 24 skeins of Mm -hmm. three ply regular knitting mm -hmm. yarn so that's about that's how it goes mm -hmm. some sheep don't produce that much wool no. so 10 pounds is quite quite yeah. a good amount so uh a lot of the um fleeces that we get are more like around six six pounds or five mm -hmm. so you're it takes takes a few sheep to make mm -hmm. a good quantity of yarn yeah it's not like volumes and volumes for no. each individual sheep no yeah, that's why we have to buy in fiber because we're not getting a lot of yarn from 60. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And we don't have all, um, you know, good wool producers necessarily. No. Good wool producers, meaning they don't have heavy, heavy fleeces. Mm -hmm. So uh, so that's that. So it's, um, it's surprising how much is not, um, how much just disappears just in the processing, mm -hmm. like the lanolin itself. You, and you, whatever is in the lanolin poop and vegetable matter and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, dirt and sand yeah. and stuff. So you think you've got quite a heavy fleece and then you wash it and, you know, it's, it's usually about 30 to 40% just, hmm. just disappears. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that's, that's a bit surprising to people. Um, other fiber that we process, just as a side note, um, don't doesn't have as much uh, 
it's not a waste or loss in the fleet. Like Alpaca doesn't have lanolin, so mm-hmm. that that's not a factor for that. They tend to have more vegetation and more dust and more dust because they like to roll. So they have other other things, but uh, that's the the answer to your question. Just mm-hmm. depends. So the next question is from Charlotte Charlotte Rucka. So she, yeah, this is one for you. Mm-hmm. She I wants kind of the Cole's note version of converting a flat cardigan to knitting in the round. Yep. Because she was interested because we mentioned that last right. time. And uh, she wondered if that's too big of a question to answer nope. or ask us any. So go ahead. Nope. I'm going to give her. Yeah. It's <laughs> an expression we say in the Maritimes for <laughs> let her rip. Is that another maritime expression that didn't help? We don't know. With the explanation, we have no idea. Uh, So you would take the stitch count on your flat piece Mm -hmm. if you're going to be working a cardigan back and forth like this, depending on if your button band is incorporated, like this one, Mm -hmm. or if you're adding it on after. Oh, the button band's incorporated on that? Okay. So either way, say you have 200 stitches on your flat cardigan. Mm -hmm. So I would cast on the 200 stitches, put a marker... Cast on 10 more and do it in a different stitch if you want. That's for my steek. I like to make my steeks really wide. Mm-hmm. So some people would do five. Mm-hmm. I do 10. Um, well, I live on the edge and something. That's yeah. Perfect. Put another marker. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. And uh, then that's it. You've set up your steek. Yeah. You've got 10 extra stitches designated by markers and a, hopefully a different stitch pattern. Mm-hmm. So you might want to do moss stitch in your steek or something like yeah. that. Um, I forget what I did last time. I forget how I designated mine, but no matter. And then all of my, like right there, you don't have to purl, right? So yeah. the cardigan I did it with was a stockinette cardigan. I would have had to purl back those 200 yeah. stitches every time. By just putting that steek in there, now I'm doing it in the round. Yeah. I'm knitting it in stockinette, uh, but it's all knit, knit. no purl. Mm-hmm. Then when I get up to where I had to do something tricky, like split for the sleeves or whatever, I stopped with the steek. Oh, then, okay. Yeah, like I didn't, you can't do it with the arms yeah. and stuff. I mean, it just gets you through the bulk. And this is, works for bottom up. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. If it was top down, whole other story. Mm-hmm. But I'm just explaining how I did it the once. And mm-hmm. it really was quite simple. Mm-hmm. So I get to the point where I was supposed to do other things that I didn't want the steak involved in. I just bound off the steak stitches. Oh, and okay. then it was sort of flat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, if it was hard to work, still connected... I could reinforce the steek and cut it right away, and I just right. have a flat piece. Or yeah. you can leave it attached if it's not fit, if it's not too fiddly to work around it attached. Mm-hmm. It really doesn't matter. But you'd have to reinforce it if you're going to continue to work with that garment because it might have a tendency to get loose if right. I've cut it already. Right. Okay. So that's if I had known this was coming up, I would have brought the sweater that I did it on. Yeah. But I would, can bring it next time. Okay. But yeah, it's super simple. Mm-hmm. I mean, even if you put in the steak and only did it halfway up, you've saved yourself so much yes. purling. Yes. I mean, one row of purl in a big cardigan is enough to <laughs> throw you right off. Yeah. So you're just adding the extra stitches to go around, which you're going to cut to open it up later. Mm-hmm. And then you just fold them back. And yeah. And I think with that one, I crochet reinforced it. But now my favorite thing is the sewing machine. Just yeah. rip the sewing machine up the side to hold the, the yarn in place. Yeah. And then when you go, in that case, I had a button band to add. Mm-hmm. So then I was able to fold the steek under. If it was an incorporated button band, you're going to end up with something on the edge of the button band that you oh, wouldn't right. normally have, right? Okay. So you would have to figure out how to finish that. So for yeah. example, this button band is incorporated. This is really the button band. So if I had put a steek in here, I would have cut it. I'd have a little steek edge to deal yeah. with on both of these, which you would probably fold under. Yeah. But it is a consideration because if you're not picking up along it, mm-hmm. that makes a really neat edge. Yes. Like if I was going to, if say this was the steek and I'm going to pick up along it, that would naturally hold that folded in and right. it'll look tidy exactly how if you, anytime you picked up. Yeah. But if it's, if it's an incorporated button band, you're going to have to find a way to finish this edge mm-hmm. with the steek that you've added mm-hmm. that you're happy with. And uh, it's not to say I wouldn't try it. But it's probably less tidy if your button band is already in your stitch count. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a button band, so it would have to be flat. You'd have to find but, a way to finish the steak under. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Somebody will write us. But you could with some pick it up and add an yeah. eye to this I would or think, whatever. I would think picking up and doing something that way yeah. and then... Just then, add a little crochet line. or yeah. It could still be done, but it's yeah. not quite as... 
simple. Yeah, there's an extra step. Yeah, there's an extra step. And if you're going to be super fussy about how tidy it looks, you might not want to do that. Mm -hmm. Because you're you're fiddling with your edge. Whereas if this was applied later, I'm Mm -hmm. not really fiddling with the edge. I'm just going to be picking up along here to apply the button band and the steak would all be way back here. Yeah. So just because I'm now interested, how do you get the buttons on that? Like, where do you put you the button? You just make a hole and then sew around. Super easy. Oh, okay. You just poke a stick through, stretch out this loose, I don't want to do it because, no. and then reinforce it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, cool. It's the no button hole button band. Yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because it's nice. so loose, right? You just jam the button in. Yeah. So that seems like it would be a really good beginner project for somebody that's just starting to knit garments. Yeah. And very satisfying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You could have a really good success, learn yeah. some skills that yeah. you can use. Because the and... big thing is, I'm going to make a big confession now. Oh, boy. Okay. This is earth shattering. I did not swatch. Oh. <laughs> that's how much I love that expandable ribbed yoke that's in the Merled Mania. I did swatch the Merled Mania because yes. I was combining two strands and our sock yarn I didn't want to waste. Yeah. And I didn't want to waste this either, but I was pretty confident because, you know, it's, it's forgiving. bulky, a very forgiving pattern mm-hmm. with fitting. Yeah. So even if you're, if you were a little too tight, it was going to stretch. Yeah. If you were a little too loose, it's kind of a casual yeah. thing anyway. Yeah. So yeah. it's not like a super yeah. fitted garment. No. So, okay. I could have measured it after a few rows just to sort of check the status. It but doesn't get any more exciting than this, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Earth, 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 do not try it. this at home. Yeah, right. And I'm prepared so. to give it away if I have to, but I don't yeah. think I will. No, no. I could almost try it on now if I hadn't. I, I don't know what is with me. <laughs> Just like, I don't know who does that. What? Like halfway through a row. I'm done. Let's go. <laughs> Just leave my knitting halfway through a row all the time. Who does that? I, of course, have to finish your yeah, row before weird. I... Yeah, weird. Yeah. I'm just like, we're going. Especially when, uh, <laughs> especially when it's flat. I know. Like, just finish the row. I and probably got it off. Otherwise, I could try it on, but right. it's attached. Yeah. It's in the round right now, yeah. even though. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and there's, like, nothing to it. I mean, it would take me 45 seconds to finish that row, but I just was probably like, go to Google that. <laughs> and then I had to go somewhere. <laughs> oh, my brain. <laughs> anyway, okay. I hope that helps. Yeah. It's uh, start with something easy, yeah, and then you get your confidence, and that's uh, it's that. So, <laughs> <laughs> are you hungry? I was yeah. just Jennifer's stuff. <laughs> Good thing we don't have the microphone down here. Yeah, I don't think they'll be able to hear it. Yeah, okay. so it's been quite an odyssey with the cord for the microphone. Eh? Oh my gosh, who knew there were eighteen different kinds of USB attachment? Yeah. I've ordered every kind of cord to go try to go lightning cord to our microphone. Yeah. That you can think of, and none of them have been right. Right. And so they're hopefully, not cheap, and it's really hard to tell. Somebody, anyway, I'm gonna get somebody to help me. I, but you can't go into Best Buy or like yeah. anything like that. Yeah. So I'm on Amazon trying to find it. We still haven't got the microphone set up. Yeah. But we have a boom coming. So by the time that arrives, I definitely need the cord. Yes. That will work. Yeah. So although I guess if it comes straight across here, it doesn't need to be as long. No. Possibly. But anyway, yeah. it's been an ordeal. Yeah. So now we're not using the microphone because last time, the problem with it down here, we had it on the table, but every time you pick something up or shuffle something, it's super And your coffee cup. And my lot. coffee cup. Every time I put it down, I had to edit out this huge clunk. And oh. I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. And I drank a lot of coffee last time. Yeah. So that was a... Yeah. So, I don't know. I think that that's about it, is it? Is yeah. there anything else that we need to Fiber talk about? Fiber Festival it? update. Yeah. So the Fiber Festival update, unfortunately, we can't really say anything right now. But by next week, we're going to have like For a sure. solid update yeah. about For if it's sure. happening or not right. happening. Right. Because, um, you know, they're making kind of... Uh, things are moving along fairly quickly about what announcements are... Like what's going to be allowed and what's not. So... Um, we will commit to be making right. an announcement on behalf of the committee for the Fiber Festival um, by next podcast. Right. Okay, very good. So everybody will know. Yeah. So um, so there's not really much more to say about that. Not a surprise. But yeah. It's been a very boring part of the podcast for the yeah. last eight weeks. Yes. And, you know, <laughs> everything is kind of up in the air, but now the the province is making announcements, right. more more detailed announcements yes. as we go. So, But thank goodness the fish and chips place is open. Yes. Oh, yes. 
the thought of okay. not having fish and chips. It's really, <laughs> Which really... we only ever took out anyway. Yeah, yeah, but it's really funny because they come out to your car. It's so all it's bell like, hop. All, yeah, or car hop. Car hop. Yeah. Car hop uh, stuff. It's like really like turning back time. I right? might want some for dinner. Oh. I forget what we're having for dinner. Hmm. I don't know. Okay. So has Clyde the cat moved in? Uh, no, but he visits every night. Okay. So he comes for, uh, <laughs> when we were having our little, um, coffee and our, our hmm. cookie, he's somehow there. I think they call that a booty call. A booty call? <laughs> <laughs> he, he doesn't, doesn't get anything. It's does a kitty call. Yeah, he only gets his, uh... He only gets a little scratch, but it's really funny because he comes to the kitchen window and then he goes out the front door. It's a she, right? Yeah, she. Yeah, she's confused. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so it's really funny. So Ken is in the kitchen making our little latte for our evening snack, lunch, as they call it around here. That's your lunch. And uh, usually it seems weird. We drink coffee right before we go to bed every night. But anyway, that's what we do. And uh, so when he flicks on the light in the kitchen, then he looks out and she's there. So he lets her in the window. She comes around. She looks around, sees what's going on, has a little drink of water usually, and then goes right out the front door. Hmm. She really doesn't like to stay in for long. Well, she's a free spirit. Yeah. Born so she goes, uh, she goes uh, five or ten minutes and then that's about it. Then she She's like that's then enough she goes, a few people. Yeah, I don't know what she she wants. To, and then she sometimes goes back around the window. But come on, <laughs> it's not it's not a revolving door. Clyde. Yeah, it's not a revolving door. Yeah. So she gets one chance. Yeah. And um, she's becoming, she really doesn't like the TV on. Okay. And she really doesn't <laughs> like the living room for some reason. So she'll come into so far of the living room, and then she turns around and goes back out. Well, there's no exit. I guess. I don't know. But if you're somewhere else in the house, she's more comfortable. Like, she'd stay right. in the kitchen for... It's like, like your, it's like in the Inglorious Bastards where Brad Pitt says, I don't like fighting in a basement. Number one, you're fighting in a basement. She's like, I don't like going into rooms that don't have an exit. Yeah. Number one, the room doesn't have an exit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just watch that movie? No. You it was remember just that? funny. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know. Surprising. I yeah. couldn't remember to bring my glasses yeah. anywhere this week, but I did remember that. Yeah. Oh, and I started to say about numbers last for the last, well, I said about my, my sweater saying it was 11 inches, but also people have pointed out graciously, thank you very much, that I had no idea how many inches are in a meter. Right? <laughs> we just <laughs> guessed. Or we just guessed. So, you know, so shoot me. So, so how many are there? I don't you know. You still don't know? I still don't know. <laughs> Obviously, Our there's research 36, department is there's 36. I know there's three feet in a, in a yard. Somebody said 39. 39. I think that's right. So why I got mixed up, I wrote this in a big, long explanation in the comments, is the reason why I got mixed up is there's 3.33 centimeters in a chun. Or is it kun. pronounced chun? Oh, kun. Okay. A kun. Okay. I think I don't know how it's pronounced, it's but whatever. Downhill. Back to the episode last, the last episode. There's a big discussion about Chinese inches, which are not inches. So you can go back and look at that if you haven't seen it. But there's there's three point three centimeters in one of those thirty kun in a meter. So I was getting all too many threes. It's a lot of threes. Yeah. Okay. Three and a third, or is it three and a third? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so we're all caught up on the comments for last episode. Yeah. So we'd like to ask you to comment again because it helps us get viewed yeah. on YouTube. And we are trying to grow our channel, of course. Yes. And also subscribe if you haven't subscribed, which I think most of you have. But if you haven't, please consider subscribing, giving us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And doing the notification. And click clicking the notification bell. And I just want to make another confession and warn people that are regular viewers because something weird is going to start happening okay so also in the last episode or the one before i can't remember i had messed up your whole system for doing comments because i just went in and commented yeah. on the ones i liked to answer because they were funny or something <laughs> <Just> <laughs> leaving all the fun parts for me yeah, yeah. oh this one's oh, fine i'll answer this yeah, yeah okay. oh this one is hilarious this i have to say something so i know i messed up your system so the truth is that there's quite a lot of comments that I found 
in YouTube that haven't been answered, and we made a commitment that we will answer. Oh, or, and or this is all like, your fault. Yes, it's all my fault completely. So I will do the penance. <laughs> but um, some of you who commented a month ago, because I started doing that quite a uh -huh. little while ago, are I'm going back to comment, but. I went to do it and then I thought, well, now they're going to think we're completely weird because I'm commenting on a comment that happened a month ago. So I am going to comment on all of them though, because well, that's some not of them, that weird. Some YouTubers don't go in that often. Well, some of them give up. They get so many. They're just like, Ugh. yeah. They so if you get a comment on a comment you made to us like four episodes ago, it's me. Mm -hmm. That's there. There's not that many. But uh, I did find some that were com like deserved a reply, but I just because I messed up your whole system, uh -huh. they got kind of lost. So it's completely on me, and not so I will <laughs> fix it. But you will sometimes receive a comment that seems like okay, what? Well, I don't think that's that unusual. No, no. Oh, okay, I think well, if you have a big channel, it's hard to keep up. Well, yeah. Then I think at that point they just don't comment on everything. Okay. Well, we Maybe. like to answer them all, but yeah. Clearly, someone was going in and messing up my way of telling where we were in the chronological order of things. Yeah, so I'll fix it. Okay. And uh, we also fixed, uh, we had a broken link because yeah. we changed something on our website. And then, so it was all messed up for your Selkirk Worsted. Mm -hmm. So if you were trying to find Selkirk Worsted from the show notes, forget it. But now you can. But now you can. We went in and fixed yeah. all that. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And what else is exciting? Like I think that's it for now. Yeah. Because we've been, you know, we're just slugging along, just waiting until we can have at least one employee come back. Because yeah. it's really been a lot of work yeah. keeping up with everything without that help, which we had had for a solid year beforehand. Yeah. So if we needed it a year ago, we definitely need it now. Yes. And uh, we're Thanks doing to this all of you. twice Thank as much. You. Yeah, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Not complaining. No. Nope. Just want the help back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll look so much more well-rested. and Yeah. Like, I think at midnight, I really looked like I had been run over by truck a drag cart drag full of dogs i don't know yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah oh it was just ooh. and this hair that's growing back it's just officially weird <laughs> where i burnt it it's like so unmanageable oh but hair appointments are coming up yes i have one booked oh i'm gonna just miss recording next time oh i think it's on the friday like i oh. won't be darn it oh well oh. Uh, mine's right. not till the june 16th yeah yeah. My stomach is growling so badly. Oh, I, I didn't hear it this go. time. Okay. I better go eat something. Yeah. Okay. You better throw that something, something <laughs> whatever that is in there. All, All right. right. Bye. Okay, bye.